In the last video, I showed you how to create the mobile app on Bluemix services, how to integrate it with the native iOS application, and how to do remote logging. In this video, I wanna show you how to take the server-side code for the Node.js instance, pull it to your local machine, make some changes, push it back up to the environment, and then invoke some of those new services from the iOS application. Here we're looking at the application on, my, on the Bluemix server instance. And you can see where it says my dashboard test. This is a project that we just created. And you can see we've got the SDK for Node.js. I can easily access the source code that's been deployed and have it managed in a Git repository just by clicking on the add Git button here in the top right. So we'll hit add Git. If you select the checkbox right here, which says populate the rep repository with the starter application package and enable delivery pipeline. It's going to give you the default source code for the application, uh, basically from a boilerplate. And then anytime that you push changes to the Git repository, it's gonna automatically deploy these changes to your Bluemix server instance. So I've got that selected. I'm gonna hit continue. This will create the Git repository. It'll just take a minute. Our Git repository has been created. Let me close this window. And we've now got the Git URL that you see right here on the Bluemix dashboard. I'm gonna open that link in a new tab. And here's the Git repository that contains all the code for my application. Up here in the top right, there's a little gear icon. We wanna select the gear icon. And from that, we can grab the Git URL. So I'm gonna copy this. Now let me jump over to a command prompt and I'm already in the directory for my project. Let me just run list. You can see I have one folder for the client uh, application, one for the server side application. I'll go into my server folder, and in this folder is where I wanna clone the Git repository. So I'm gonna run git clone, we'll paste in the URL, and we'll put it in the current directory. And this is gonna pull down the application source code for the Node.js instance onto my local machine. And you can see that took just a few seconds. We've now got all the code locally. If I run list again, you can see that we have all the files that are part of the boilerplate for this application. And let me jump over to a code editor. And you can see I already had this code editor uh, watching the, the parent directory. So we can see here's my server directory. Inside that I've got app.js. And this is the boilerplate application that's been deployed to Bluemix. If you want to run this locally, there's a couple things that you have to do. The protected URL path requires some assets that will only run on the Bluemix server. And that's using this IMF backend strategy instance right here. This is going to fail in your local Node.js environment, so I'm just gonna put a try catch around it just so we can work locally. And we'll put console.log so we can see that the error happened. And we end it here. Just by adding that try catch, we'll now be able to run it locally. You just won't be able to access content that might be in this protected directory. And then let me jump back over to the console and I'm going to run npm install, which is going to pull down the dependencies that are needed for this application. So that'll just take a minute. It's going to pull down the express framework, which is an infrastructure for building web applications on Node.js, as well as some other libraries that are used by the Bluemix instance. Once we've got everything, now I can launch the app just by running node app.js. You can see here, um, there, there is an error, uh, can't find application ID vcap underscore application. That is from the try catch that I'd mentioned uh, just a moment ago. So you have to have that in there, otherwise the app won't start. But otherwise the mobile backend is listening at port 3000. And just to prove that the app is running, let me jump over to Chrome and we'll pull up a window that we have here. And you can see I've got um, localhost port 3000, we'll enter. And you can see that the application is running hello, hello from mobile backend. And there's a link to for more information for creating mobile applications. If we jump back to the code, you'll be able to see that that's actually the content that's in the public index.html. So I'm gonna run back to app.js. And let's say I wanna create a new URL endpoint for my application. Let me just copy and paste our app.git and let's just call it my service. And rather than sending a file, let's just do response.send. We'll give it a 200 HTTP code and we'll just put in a text string saying, this is my response. Very simple, we've just added a new endpoint. It's gonna return this text. Now let's jump back over to our browser um, and I'll go back to my service and we'll hit refresh. You can see um, 
You can see if I try and hit localhost port 3000, my service, it says, can I get my service? We need to restart the Node.js backend. So we'll kill it, we'll restart it just to deploy the new changes and we'll jump back over to Chrome, hit refresh and we can see this is my response. So we've now made some changes to the server running locally and let's say we want to push those back up to our Git repository or deploy them to our Bluemix server instance. There's two ways you can deploy to the Bluemix server. One, you can commit it to the Git repository and use the automated deployment for, so the changes in Git will be pushed to the Bluemix server. Or you can use the Cloud Foundry command line API and push it directly to the Bluemix server. I'm going to kill my node process here. You can see I'm still in the server directory and I want to do git. Let's first run git status. You can see app.js was modified. So I want to run git commit-m, we'll just put our comment here, modified app.js. And of course I forgot to run git add, so we'll do git add app.js. And now let me run my git commit message again. Okay, we've now got our, our changes staged uh, and ready to be pushed up to our git server. So we'll run git push. Now we can see that our changes have been pushed up to master um, on our Git server. So I'll jump back to the browser and we can jump back to my dashboard. If we look in our comments, you can see here modified app.js. Our changes have been pushed up to the Git repository. I jump back to the Bluemix console and you can see here in the activity log um, that I just updated the app and modified the environment. Next, you can see that the application was stopped because it is restarting. And here we can see that the app is started again. If I jump over to another window here in my browser, you can see that earlier I tried to access my service, which didn't exist at that point in time. And if I refresh, you can see this is my response. So that, that was returned. What we've just done very quickly is pull the source from the app that was created for us. We got it running locally. We made some changes, executed those changes locally, pushed it back into Git. Git triggered a new deployment and our Node.js application restarted with the new code. So we've now gone through the complete life cycle of getting the code locally, making changes, pushing it back up to the server. If we want to invoke this inside of our iOS application, let me jump over to Xcode. <clears throat> Here we have Xcode and I have a couple changes already staged uh, just to make this go a little bit faster. So right now my application, um, when I click on a sign in button, it automatically transitions to the new view. And I'll just show you what I'm talking about here by going over to the iOS simulator. If I click on sign in, it doesn't make a request to the server, it's just hard coded. Um, it automatically transitions to the new view. All this data is hard coded, but we'll change that later. What I want to do is change this so it doesn't automatically transition to the new view. What I want to do is make a request to that service that we just created. And I'm just using this as an example. I'm not really doing a true authentication here. I'm just calling a service and then when the service responds, um, I'm going to transition to the new view. I'm going to make a request to the Bluemix server using the IMF resource request class. This class is part of the Bluemix API and it'll be able to handle authentication interacting with the Bluemix, Bluemix server. It also allows you to add custom headers, define timeouts, and a couple other helper methods. I'm gonna make the request to my endpoint that we just created. So it's my dashboard test.mybluemix.net slash my service. That's what we just created. We'll set the HTTP method as get. So it's gonna make an HTTP get to this endpoint. And we'll send the request and on completion, this code block will be executed. So if there's an error, uh, we'll log the error using the remote logging for the Bluemix application, Bluemix mobile application. And if it's successful, we're just gonna log a bug message saying my service was success, and then we will perform the segue into the new view upon completion making a request. So I'll go ahead and stop the simulator. Let's run it and we'll jump back and we'll hit sign in. That's actually making a request. Um, when the response came back from the server, it went ahead and changed views. So while, while I'm not really doing an authentication here, I just wanted to show you how you can make a request and then we're performing an action once that request is completed. And we can see in the console here, this is my response. That's the response that's coming back from the remote service. I'll jump back over to the browser and you can see this is my response. Jump back to Xcode. We can see that that's what was returned. 
and then we can see the debug message my service success and that's coming from this logger instance right here and there we have it we've taken the server code we've pulled it locally we set up a local environment we've made changes we've deployed those to the server and then we've invoked the new service from our client application be sure to check out my next video where we'll cover the interaction with the clouded NoSQL data service that's part of your Bluemix mobile application.